So, hello and welcome everybody. This is um, <clears throat> the second episode of Buffy's Vampire Slayer. Thank you for all the comments and uh, feedback I've had for episode one. Um, it's been a nice little uptake on it. Um, and it sort of gives me the confidence to, to carry on. Um, like I say, just to reiterate people who maybe missed the first half of this two-parter, um, this is a very new territory for me. It's not something I'm overly comfortable with, so... You'll have to bear with me if I'm a little bit uh, rusty. Um, or if I'm not quite as engaging just yet. Um, so, yeah, we'll just get straight straight into it. Um, this is my <clears throat> retrospective re retrospective reaction to uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've watched the show many, many times. Um, and this is going to be more of a... You know, not a first time reaction, not a second time reaction, but as someone who's watched this many times and was just sort of looking back on what works, maybe what doesn't work now, uh, and just basically fill it with like anecdotes and uh, trivia and, and, and things like that. And then hopefully people will engage and they can, if they disagree or whatever, I welcome all that. Please um, chuck me, continue to chuck me the comments. And um, yes, we'll just get, like I say, get straight into it. This is. Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 1 Episode 2 The Harvest It is the second half of the sort of Welcome to the Hellmouth opening two-parter In the UK on BBC2 it was aired as one complete um, one complete episode If you bought the VHSs you would have had this as a, as a movie But as it's presented on like, the DVDs and stuff now it's actually split into two parts um, just before we start the episode, I just want to do a shout out to Grington uh, three hundred three hundred, who points out that um, there is actually a slight continuity error between the two episodes in that Buffy's not wearing her cross in the first episode. So uh, be sure to look out for her not wearing that. Uh, maybe in the first couple of shots, I don't I can't quite remember how the harvest starts, but um, yeah, we'll, we will certainly look out for it. Um, yeah, I've said we'll get straight into it, and I've waffled on enough. So um, let's go. This is. Season 1, Episode 2, The Harvest. <laughs> I forgot this as well, because this is the Region 1 um, DVDs you don't actually get any previously of. Um, which, of course, does affect Episode 100 with the really awesome... Previously on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Hey, Xander! So I've never really noticed how much of uh, her own stunt work Sarah does in the in these these opening two episodes. Okay? She's, she's, we've seen Sarah throw quite a few kicks off. It's like quite impressive. They surrounded us. That girl grabbed him and took off. Wait. I don't know. This world is older than any of you know. Yet Giles and his exposition. Mythology. It did not begin as a paradise. For untold eons, demons walked the earth. They made it their home, their, uh, their hell. Oh, I, I need to sit down. You are sitting down. Oh, <laughs> good for me. So vampires are demons. So this episode is written by um, Joss himself. Um, and it, and it, you know, it, it's got all the hallmarks of a traditional Joss Whedon script, you know, from the, you know, I need to sit down. You are sitting down. It's just, it's just genius. Obviously, Buffy was um, set up to be like a mid-season replacement. I can't actually remember what show it replaced, um, but that's one of the reasons why season one was a shortened season because they were, you know, obviously testing the water in many ways to see whether it would take. But it actually has quite a strong production value. I think this um, Master's sort of ruined church set is really, really impressive. It's very strange to see um, how Julie Benz plays Darla here because obviously this is before, long, long before they decided to make Darla a much more important character. And anyone who, who goes on to watch Angel um, will see she's she is very different character. It's 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 one of those things that's very strange to go back and watch and see uh, see Julie Benz's Darla like this. We had more offerings, but there was trouble. A girl. If you hadn't shown up, they would have taken us too. Does anybody mind if I pass out? Breathe. 
Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> this big guy, Luke, he talked about an offering to the master. You have no idea where they took Jessica. I looked around, but as soon as I got clear of the graveyard, they could have just... Boom. They can fly? They can drive. <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't remember hearing a call. Oh, God. Let's take an enormous is it? It just disarms me with this dialogue, and I've heard this dialogue so much. I find that a lot of the... I find that um, one of the great things with season one in particular, even though season one, and, and to some extent some of season two, is not the best, as anyone knows. The, the, the low points of the first two seasons generally not be great episodes. Um, you know, we're only two episodes off Teacher's Pet, and that's that's not one of the best episodes but because it has that sort of early innocence the dialogue like Xander there just carries it so much um, when you get to sort of the real sort of low points um, and Double Meat Palace is probably my least favourite episode of the entire run in season 6 because season 6 is so dour and so miserable it doesn't have the dialogue and the, and the humour to really sort of punch through those harder episodes to watch and um, you, you know, give a light tone. Whereas in season one, it, it's, it's just perfect. It, it still disarms me. It makes me laugh now. And this boy lives. I also give this a four out of five as well. I, I once again forgot to mention that at the start of the episode. There it is. Charmers. I'm a bit fuzzy, however, on the details. It may be that you can wrest some information from that dread machine. <laughs> The beginning of Giles's love of um, computers, ladies and gentlemen. British, wasn't it? <laughs> Welcome to the new world. So the ability to super jump is something that we don't really get a lot of. There's a couple of times Buffy does do the odd um, impressive jump, but it certainly implies that she's going to be doing a lot more of these sort of acrobatics, and uh, she doesn't tend to. Put it on the computer search. If it's in there, it'll turn up. I don't suppose you've got a key on you. They really don't like me dropping in. I wonder how long he was waiting in there. Why not? They really don't like me. Don't be expecting you. Got a friend down there. Or at least a potential friend. Do you know what it's like to have a friend? I wasn't supposed to be a stumper. I really forgot how great these early scenes are with these two. I make no secret in hiding that um, Buffy and Angel is my chosen relationships of the uh, of both Buffy and Angel, Buffy and Spike. It, I was always a if I have to use it, I was always a Bangle fan. Um, yeah, I always have my head cannon ending that eventually he does Shanshu and they do live. Happier ever after, as, uh, as as corny as that sounds. Oh, Sander, what are you doing here? Something stupid. I followed you. Well, you're I, gonna... I couldn't just sit at home and do nothing. I understand. Now go away. No. You're not loving this story. No, actually, I find it oddly comforting. They will gather and be gathered. Star Wars style scream wipe. You don't get many of them in the show after this. Who'd have thought of all the amazing characters that are in this show? Mercedes uh, McNab McNab is, um, is pretty much one of the longest serving. She was in the unaired pilot and she's in the last episode of Angel. Even like in terms of like duration, she's in it longer than um, David Boreanaz. Uh, she's doing something else. Jesse. Oh no. Oh, Jesse. Sandra. Jesse, man, are you okay? I am not okay on an epic scale. Wait, wait. We go in the dark eyes. That's, that's something they quickly abandon. They, they do. They are more um, akin to a zombie in this sort of opening two-part. You can die. And there we go. There's Jesse. You're gone.
it's interesting as well because they 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 really do revise Sarah's strength um, or Buffy's strength, should I say? Because you know the Buffy of later years would not struggle to pull that vent cover off the stuff she can do. Um, if anything, she seems almost underpowered here. 